May the 25th, 2 Samuel 7, 1 through 8, 18. When the Lord finally sent peace upon the land, and Israel was no longer at war with the surrounding nations, David said to Nathan the prophet, Look, here I am living in this beautiful cedar palace while the ark of God is out in a tent. Nathan replied, Go ahead with what you have in mind, for the Lord is with you. But that night the Lord said to Nathan, Tell my servant David not to do it. For I have never lived in a temple. My home has been a tent ever since the time I brought Israel out of Egypt. And I have never once complained to Israel's leaders, the shepherds of my people. Have I ever asked them, why haven't you built me a beautiful cedar temple? Now go and give this message to David from the Lord of heaven. I chose you to be the leader of my people Israel when you were a mere shepherd tending your sheep in the pasture land. I have been with you wherever you have gone and have destroyed your enemies. And I will make your name greater yet, so that you will be one of the most famous men in the world. I have selected a homeland for my people, from which they will never have to move. It will be their own land, where the heathen nations won't bother them, as they did when the judges ruled my people. There will be no more wars against you, and your descendants shall rule this land for generations to come. For when you die, I will put one of your sons upon your throne, and I will make his kingdom strong. He is the one who shall build me a temple and I will continue his kingdom into eternity. I will be his father, and he shall be my son. If he sins, I will use other nations to punish him. But my love and kindness shall not leave him, as I took it from Saul, your predecessor. Your family shall rule my kingdom forever. So Nathan went back to David and told him everything the Lord had said. Then David went into the tabernacle and sat before the Lord and prayed, O oh Lord God, why have you showered your blessings on such an insignificant person as I am? And now, in addition to everything else, you speak of giving me an eternal dynasty. Such generosity is far beyond any human standard. Oh, Lord God, what can I say? For you know what I am like. You are doing all these things just because you promised to and because you want to. How great you are, Lord God. We have never heard of any other God like you, and there is no other God. What other nation in all the earth has received such blessings as Israel, your people? For you have rescued your chosen nation in order to bring glory to your name. You have done great miracles to destroy Egypt and its gods. You chose Israel to be your people forever, and you became our God. And now, Lord God, do as you have promised concerning me and my family. And may you be eternally honored when you have established Israel as your people and have established my dynasty before you. For you have revealed to me, O Lord of heaven, God of Israel, that I am the first of a dynasty which will rule your people forever. That is why I have been bold enough to pray this prayer of acceptance. For you are indeed God, and your words are truth, and you have promised me these good things. So do as you have promised. Bless me and my family forever. May our dynasty continue on and on before you. For you, Lord God, have promised. After this, David subdued and humbled the Philistines by conquering Gath, their largest city. He also devastated the land of Moab. He divided his victims by making them lie down side by side in rows. Two-thirds of each row, as measured with a tape, were butchered. And one-third were spared to become David's servants. They paid him tribute each year. He also destroyed the forces of King Hadadezer, son of Rehob of Zobah, in a battle at the Euphrates River, for Hadadezer had attempted to regain his power. David captured 1,700 cavalry and 20,000 infantry. Then he lamed all of the chariot horses except for 100 teams. He also slaughtered 22,000 Syrians from Damascus when they came to help Hadadezer. David placed several army garrisons in Damascus, and the Syrians became David's subjects and brought him annual tribute money. So the Lord gave him victories wherever he turned. David brought the gold shields to Jerusalem, which King Hadadezer's officers had used. He also carried back to Jerusalem a very large amount of bronze from Hadadezer's cities of Beta and Berathai. When King Toai of Hamath heard about David's victory over the army of Hadadezer, he sent his son Joram to congratulate him, for Hadadezer and Toai were enemies. He gave David presents made from silver, gold, and bronze. David dedicated all of these to the Lord, along with the silver and gold he had taken from Syria, Moab, Ammon, the Philistines, Amalek, and King Hadadezer. So David became very famous. After his return, he destroyed 18,000 Edomites at the Valley of Salt and then placed garrisons throughout Edom 
so that the entire nation was forced to pay tribute to Israel, another example of the way the Lord made him victorious wherever he went. David reigned with justice over Israel and was fair to everyone. The general of his army was Joab, son of Zeruiah, and his secretary of state was Jehoshaphat, son of Ahilud. Zadok, son of Ahitub, and Ahimelech, son of Abiathar, were the high priests, and Seraiah was the king's private secretary. Benaiah, son of Jehoiada, was captain of his bodyguard, and David's sons were his assistants. John 14, 15 through 31. If you love me, obey me, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another comforter, and he will never leave you. He is the Holy Spirit, the Spirit who leads into all truth. The world at large cannot receive him, for it isn't looking for him and doesn't recognize him. But you do, for he lives with you now, and someday shall be in you. No, I will not abandon you or leave you as orphans in the storm. I will come to you. In just a little while I will be gone from the world, but I will still be present with you, for I will live again, and you will too. When I come back to life again, you will know that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. The one who obeys me is the one who loves me. And because he loves me, my Father will love him, and I will too, and I will reveal myself to him. Judas, not Judas Iscariot, but his other disciple with that name, said to him, Sir, why are you going to reveal yourself only to us disciples, and not to the world at large? Jesus replied, Because I will only reveal myself to those who love me and obey me. The Father will love them too, and we will come to them and live with them. Anyone who doesn't obey me doesn't love me. And remember, I am not making up this answer to your question. It is the answer given by the Father who sent me. I am telling you these things now while I am still with you. But when the Father sends the Comforter to represent me, and by the Comforter I mean the Holy Spirit, he will teach you much, as well as remind you of everything I myself have told you. I am leaving you with a gift, peace of mind and heart. And the peace I give isn't fragile like the peace the world gives. So don't be troubled or afraid. Remember what I told you. I am going away, but I will come back to you again. If you really love me, you will be very happy for me, for now I can go to the Father who is greater than I am. I have told you these things before they happen, so that when they do, you will believe in me. I don't have much more time to talk to you, for the evil prince of this world approaches. He has no power over me but I will freely do what the Father requires of me so that the world will know that I love the Father. Come, let's be going. Psalm 119, 36 through 52. Help me to prefer obedience to making money. Turn me away from wanting any other plan than yours. Revive my heart toward you. Reassure me that your promises are for me, for I trust and revere you. How I dread being mocked for obeying, for your laws are right and good. I long to obey them. Therefore, in fairness, renew my life, for this was your promise, yes, Lord, to save me. Now spare me by your kindness and your love. Then I will have an answer for those who taunt me, for I trust your promises. May I never forget your words, for they are my only hope. Therefore, I will keep on obeying you forever and forever, free within the limits of your laws. I will speak to kings about their value, and they will listen with interest and respect. How I love your law. How I enjoy your commands. Come, come to me, I call to them, for I love them and will let them fill my life. Never forget your promises to me, your servant, for they are my only hope. They give me strength in all my troubles, how they refresh and revive me. Proud men hold me in contempt for obedience to God, but I stand unmoved. From my earliest youth I have tried to obey you. Your word has been my comfort. Proverbs for today, 1533. Humility and reverence for the Lord will make you both wise and honored.